are emphasizing early detection, early treatment, eh? what what signs or red flags should you look out for? You know, sometimes you feel I have a neck ache. Uh, am I suffering? You go to Google, you've got yes. cancer. Yeah. <laughs> what red flags should we be looking out for now, yeah. just to be safe? Yeah. You know, actually, Grace, we should find cancer when we feel nothing. When you absolutely have no sign of symptom of cancer mm -hmm. is a stage at which we want to diagnose an individual's malignancy. Mm -hmm. Now, by the time you get signs and symptoms, say of breast cancer, the lump is big, it is very obvious, there is already nipple retraction or there is ulceration, sometimes the disease is very advanced. When you get cancer of the cervix and you have bleeding, you have vaginal bleeding, or you have low abdominal pain and swelling, or you have difficulty in walking, usually it's very advanced. If you look at prostate cancer, you have difficulty in passing urine and back pain, and you know, cord compression, that is usually too late. By the time cancer of the esophagus is giving you difficulty in swallowing until saliva cannot go down, and you've lost a lot of weight and anemia, it's also too late. So the, we should actually fight cancer when it has no sign and no symptom. And that would be when you go for screening to look for it when you don't think you have it. And that is why we encourage people to go for checkups, wellness check. Once a year, go for a wellness check as they check whether you have diabetes or hypertension. Also check whether you have a malignancy. Okay. How much does that screening cost, both private and public? You know, people yes. want to know, is this going to cost me an amount? Like, can I even afford it? But I think it's just to change people's mind shift towards the importance of screening. Mm -hmm. I think that has not really caught on. And we have this sort of health-seeking behavior that is very common in our parts of the world, uh, where no news is good news. Mm -hmm. So many people <laughs> will not go and prompt a doctor to look for what there is in it. Now, you find that even those with access from health insurance and national health insurance fund, where screening is paid for, a very small majority actually utilizes this. So probably a greater emphasis for those who can have access to insurance and are financed to do screening, they should. Then we talk about encouraging insurances and national health insurance fund, you know, corporations to be able to cater for their staff to go for screen because the reality is an early cancer is very easy to save a life and it's actually cheaper to treat rather than treating palliatively for advanced disease so it is expensive to go for screening but i think the greater advocacy that they shall be the greater awareness we as oncologists are greatly hopeful that this will change if you take cancer of the uterine cervix, for example, in other countries, in developed countries, cancer of the cervical can cancer of the uterine cervix is nowhere up the charts because of pap smears and managing whatever abnormalities they get early. So their women don't die of cervical cancer. So and you know things like visual inspection with acetic acid, which is very very easy to implement, mm -hmm. even in small clinics in you know in the peripheral centers mm -hmm. is probably some of the advocacy and the implementations we should have and this is what we should be telling county governments examining women breasts and doing a simple biopsy very easy to do in a peripheral clinic you know doing uh, examination for prostate cancer in men very easy to do in peripheral clinics and i think if we go down to those basics mm -hmm. we may not catch all the cancers but we are going to catch a significant proportion Majority. to change some of this trend that we can see in our nation today. Yeah. People are scared. Like I would tell myself, I'm scared. You know, you, sometimes you sit, you're like, okay, anybody could get sick, could be me tomorrow, yeah? What do I need to do differently? One is to remember that you may not change your risk for cancer. Mm. You know, last week, a pastor told me that he's been um, a vegetarian for many years, for probably 30, 40 years, he doesn't understand why he has cancer. So we should stop the generalization that cancer only comes from what we eat. We should know that we may not change our individual risk for a malignancy. We will get it, but what we should do is actually pick it up early. So the message that everybody can get cancer, but can we make a diagnosis early? That is what we should be aiming to screening, 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 and looking for cancer so that we can make an early diagnosis. Women, no excuse at not having a pap smear. 
a breast exam when you go to see your doctor. And that just annual visit to the doctor, which I hope will become available with universal health care. And two, a great advocacy from those who've had cancer and survived. Because all we know are the ones who've done badly, but there are many more who've actually survived and are quiet because of the stigma of disease. So more probably openness about that to give a lot of encouragement. Two, in our own individual capacities, and I say this not for cancer alone, but for non-communicable disease, diabetes, hypertension, is changing our lifestyles. Use tobacco less, take alcohol less, eat right. You know, diets that are less in red meat and a lot more in fruits and vegetables, drinking water, exercises, and actually being more physically active, unless, you know, attempt at getting, you know, CT scans and mammograms that we actually don't need. They should be stratified according to the screening guidelines. And of course, when people feel something, it is not wrong to actually see your doctor. Not self-medicate over the counter because you're anemic and you don't know why you're anemic. And probably if you saw your doctor, what you need is a colonoscopy so that colon cancer can actually be uh, diagnosed early. So also a greater strike to, towards getting vaccinated you know, things like hepatitis B vaccination, human papilloma virus vaccination, that also reduces your risk of getting some of the malignancies that are associated with infective causes. So on an individual point of view, that's probably what I would, I would say.